In 2014 and 2015, the Phillies were one of the worst teams in baseball. Bryce Harper was still five years away from signing with them in free agency, and the team was primarily focused on rebuilding for the future as well as developing their current top prospects. Jesse Biddle, being their top pitching prospect, was an exciting young talent that was knocking on the door of his MLB debut. Despite a slow start to his second year in AA, Jesse quickly figured things out and was clearly on track for a future promotion. Then, disaster struck. In the most unique and unpredictable way, Jesse would have his career sidelined and his health damaged. What happened to Jesse Biddle? Hey guys, Brett here at Baseball Prospect Analysis, and today we're going to break down Jesse Biddle as well as go over his truly tragic accident that happened in 2014. First, I'd like to remind you of the 5K sub giveaway I'm currently running. Once I hit 5K subs on YouTube, I'll be giving away an Xbox Series X to one of my lucky subscribers. In order to be eligible for this giveaway, you must like this video, be subscribed to this channel, as well as follow my TikTok. The link will be in the description. After you have completed this, make sure to comment done in the comment section below. Alright, now back to the video. Jesse Biddle was a 6'6", 225-pound left-handed pitcher out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania that attended Germantown Friends High School. He was verbally committed to Oregon and ranked 45th overall in the 2010 class. Jesse possessed an outstanding athletic build with loose and long levers that left plenty of room for projection. He repeated his mechanics well and displayed a low-effort delivery producing low 90s fastball. His breaking stuff was present but needed improvement. At 71 miles an hour, Scouts felt his curveball was thrown too soft but its shape and big breaking movement could prove to help him develop it and do a future plus pitch. The changeup and slider both graded out anywhere between average to below average. For Jesse, the big selling point was clearly his projection. Physically, his ceiling was tremendously high. The long levers, big frame, and low effort delivery that produced low 90s heat made him an arm a lot of scouts could dream on. The main concerns regarding him draft-wise related to his shaky command and his current skill set. If he doesn't live up to his projection, then he could end up being a career minor leaguer. Heading into the 2010 draft, Biddle had some early round buzz to him, but was not looked at as a first round talent by most scouts. However, in a very surprising move, the Philadelphia Phillies decided to use their first round selection to pick up the hometown lefty. He was selected 27th overall and signed for a $1.16 million dollar signing bonus. Now you gotta remember, this was back in 2010. Your average high school draft prospect was not throwing upper 90s heat like in today's draft. A low 90s projectable lefty like Jesse was considered a fairly solid pick. It was also exciting for fans to see their favorite team pick up a local talent. After finishing out the year in rookie ball with one short A appearance, he'd be assigned to the single A Lakewood Blue Claws, where he'd produce fairly solid results. On the year, he'd finish 7-8 with a 2.98 ERA and 133 innings pitched, striking out 124 while only walking 66, keeping opponents to a .219 batting average. For someone who was in his first full season of pro ball, only one year out of high school, the numbers were exciting. They showed that he was clearly learning and adjusting to the next level. Many first-year teenagers in the minors struggle with this, as a jump from high school ball to professional is substantial. His efforts were not overlooked either. Baseball America listed him as the number two overall prospect in the Philly system that December, and he would receive all-star recognition for the South Atlantic League. For the 2012 season, Philly sent him on a one-way flight to Clearwater, Florida to play at their high-A affiliate, the Clearwater Threshers. Once again, Jesse would prove himself as a rising star prospect, finishing the year 10-6 with a 3.22 ERA in 142 and a third innings pitched, striking out 151 and only walking 54. Once again, he would receive all-star recognition for his league and was now ranked the number one prospect in the Phillies organization. His improved command and workhorse build had many projecting him as a possible late 2013 or early 2014 call-up. As expected, Biddle was sent to Reading, Pennsylvania in 2013 to start a season at the AA Fighting Phils. He'd put up fair numbers, finishing 5-14 with a 3.64 ERA and 138 innings pitched, striking out 154 and walking 82. Unfortunately, two bad outings in July where he allowed nine earned runs in two innings greatly affected his stat line, adding more than half a run. The 2013 season may not have been perfect for Jesse, but it did have some good come out of it. He was able to compete in the MLB All-Star Futures game, tallying a win for Team USA, as well as show off his improved repertoire at the AA level. His fastball now had the ability to reach the mid-90s when needed, and his curveball had been dominant all season, often leaving batters looking foolish. Add that his changeup was now arguably above average, and he could certainly chalk 2013 up to be a productive season for Biddle. His efforts were once again awarded, as in 2014 he would receive his first MLB spring training invite. This gave him the chance to learn and interact with loads of veterans, including Roy Holiday, Cliff Lee, and Mike Adams. 
Unfortunately, his visit would be cut short after two below average appearances resulting in him being reassigned to minor league camp. Even with his subpar spring training debut, it was still very apparent that whether he starts in double A AA or triple A, the big leagues was only one call away. With the 2014 season approaching and a notoriously bad Phillies team publicly stating that this would be a rebuilding year, Phillies fans didn't have much to look forward to. Most of the focus was now on upcoming prospects and future young talent they'd hoped to pick up in the coming draft. At the center of the focus was of course the former first round pick, Jesse Biddle. Knowing the season would be full of opportunities for younger guys to get innings, fans and Jesse himself eagerly awaited for that special phone call. To no surprise, Jesse was not added to the big league lineup to start the year. Instead, Philadelphia opted to assign him to double-A reading again. For a young prospect, this was understandably tough for Jesse to accept. He was expecting to be assigned for a short stay in AAA before an early 2014 debut. Now looking at this from the outside in, it does make sense what the Phillies did. Jesse struggled in spring training and sending him to AA would allow him to face far lesser competition. Getting a couple quality starts under his belt would help him get more confidence and trust in his stuff heading into his debut. Where starting him in AAA could lead to some unexpected struggles, making it that much harder to justify his call up. It's fairly common to see a younger prospect get called up to the show from AA and then get sent down to AAA after a couple appearances. This gives the prospect a taste of the bigs and also makes the transition easier in the future. Jesse, of course, didn't see it this way and admitted he was frustrated with the situation. His emotions ultimately got the best of him and led to his first two starts going bad. But after he came to terms with their decision, he proceeded to go 3-3 three and three with a 2.33 ERA. Things were looking really good for Jesse. If he continued to post numbers like those and improve his strike percentage, an MLB call-up seemed certain. But unfortunately, this is where things took a dramatic turn for the worse. On May 22nd of 2014, Reading, Pennsylvania received one of the nastiest hailstorms in recent memory. Videos and photos surfaced on the internet, showing tennis ball-sized hail damaging cars and demolishing windshields. Biddle's experience was no different. He got caught in the storm while driving and initially tried to ride it out, but to his surprise, the one thing keeping him safe from hail became a death trap. Both his front and back windshield were cracking, and the top of his car began caving in. Then, in a frightening burst, his back windshield exploded, sending shards of glass all over him. Knowing his front windshield was next, Jesse ditched the car and ran for cover, but his efforts would be in vain. While running away from the car, Jesse was struck in the back of the head by a large piece of hail. Not only did this cause a headache, but also caused his head to bleed. Following the storm, he recalled being confused and just not feeling right. He had a concussion when he was younger, but didn't remember what it felt like. Unsure of his health, he would cancel his start for the next week and take an impact concussion test. He would ultimately pass the test and be cleared to pitch 11 days following the accident. As you may have already guessed, Jesse in all reality was in no condition to pitch. After noticing his cerebral issues and his general out of place feeling, he decided to try and pitch through it rather than shut it down. This of course did not go well. In his next five starts, Biddle would go 0-5 with a 9.82 ERA in 22 innings. Finally, after a 10 run, three inning outing at Binghamton, the Phillies decided to shut him down and send him to Clearwater for further concussion testing. Upon arriving in Florida, Jesse noted I couldn't even walk in a straight line and I didn't realize how hazy I was until I finally snapped out of it. Doctors confirmed what everyone suspected. Jesse was in nowhere near good enough condition to play. After a full month of rest, he finally felt the symptoms had subsided and he was ready to go. He would go on to pitch two impressive outings in Clearwater before getting called up to Reading again. His season would ultimately end due to a strained muscle in his first start at Reading. However, this result was not acceptable for the young and eager top prospect. The Phillies, also wanting to get him the innings he missed, sent him to the Clearwater Instructional League and then to the Puerto Rican Winter League. This move would spell out in disaster, with Biddle leaving Puerto Rico after only two starts due to elbow tendinitis. After an MRI cleared him of any structural damage, Jesse was now safe to return to the next year for his second big league spring training. 2015 would be another year of uncertainty for Biddle. Initially, he would start in AA reading again until he was ultimately called up to AAA Lee Valley in July of 2015. Unfortunately, after an awful debut and a 6.25 ERA in 9 starts, Jesse would be sent back down to AA. And just when you think things couldn't get any worse, in October of 2015 it was announced Biddle would undergo Tommy John surgery and miss an entire 2016 season. The former former number one overall prospect was now unranked, injured, and seemingly forgotten. That was until February of 2016 when the Phillies finally decided to pull the plug by trading Biddle to the Pirates for reliever Yervis Medina. Medina had never thrown a pitch for the Pirates and had little to no value to him, where Biddle represented a young athlete with former success. The Pirates have also recently had luck rehabilitating former top prospects that fell off. 
This trade was essentially a dump of two players neither organization wanted. The following month proved this when the Pirates released him. Three days later, the Braves took a chance and signed him off waivers. Fast forward to May of 2018 and Biddle would actually make his long-awaited MLB debut for the Braves. After his stellar 2017 comeback season in AA, Atlanta would fast-track him to the majors in 2018. Overall, he had a fairly solid rookie year, posting a 6-1 record in 63 innings pitched, striking out 67, walking 31, and holding down a 3.11 ERA. He seemed to suffer from fatigue during his second half of the season, but that was somewhat expected due to his increased usage. For Jesse, it must have felt great to finally get that call up and just be able to compete at the highest level. Unfortunately, his dream would be very short-lived. From 2019 to 2021, Jesse would play for four different teams and only throw 38 major league innings. A slew of injuries and a sky-high 8-plus ERA would plague him, eventually resulting in his exit from Major League Baseball. He would elect for free agency in October of 2021, but ultimately go unsigned until December of that year. The team he signed with, however, was not part of the MLB or even an independent league. Jesse had decided to test his talent overseas by signing with the Oryx Buffaloes of the Nippon Professional Baseball League in Japan. He'd start off the 2022 season red hot, going 2-0 in 11 games, striking out 17 and only allowing one run. After his initial hot streak, he would cool down a little but still would contribute good numbers. As of July 13th, 2022, Jesse has appeared in 30 games for the Buffaloes posting a 3-4 record with 13 holds and 30 innings pitched. His ERA currently sits at a 3.64 while striking out 35 and walking 14. He's also hit 7 batters, making a total of 21 free bases handed out. While his strikeout rate is impressive, he's still giving up far too many bases. Fortunately for Biddle, there's still plenty of time left in the season to build on those numbers. Now I'd like to go over my take on this whole situation. Do I personally believe Jesse still has the ability to compete at the MLB level? I'd say in today's game where bullpens are stacked full of young and exciting talent, the answer would be no. Most organizations would rather promote a young up-and-coming prospect than sign a 30-year-old reliever with limited MLB experience. Promoting a prospect will generally cost them less and provide more trade value in the future. It's not to say it's impossible for him to be signed by an MLB club again, it's just extremely unlikely. My personal hope is that he continues to succeed in Japan and lives out a healthy career wherever he decides to play. Despite having control issues throughout his career, it's clear to me that injuries and an awful string of bad luck led to Jesse where he is now. The big turning point seemed to be that unfortunate hailstorm. If that accident never happened, 2014 may have been the year Jesse debuted. This could have led to a completely different outcome. However, the other injuries he suffered throughout his career would have most likely still occurred. As always, I wish the best for Jesse and his future career. But that's about it for today, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed this one. It's definitely a more requested video I've seen in the comments section recently. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for weekly videos. Once we hit 5k subs, I will be giving away that Xbox Series X. In order to be eligible for this giveaway, you must follow the rules listed on the screen. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.